Good morning. I would like to uh, first thank Chapel Programs and the Office of Spiritual Development for offering me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. It is a privilege that I do not take lightly. Now, as some of you may already be able to tell, I have a slight southern accent. I am originally from South Carolina, and I spend several weeks there each year visiting family. I do not apologize for the accent because it is a part of me. I just wanted to acknowledge it up front for the few that can hear the slight accent. <laughs> On a more serious note, thank you for being here. Let us begin with a word of prayer. God, I thank you for this opportunity to share what you have given me with your people. I ask that you dwell in me and in this place. Bless each student here. Bless their families. Bless Biola. Lord, allow us to be the people that you would have us to be. Continue to make this chapel what you would have it to be. Meet us at our need. Now I say, as your servant David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Lisa Ishihara, the director of chapel programs, approached me last year about speaking in chapel. I had been a part of a brainstorming group that had provided thoughts on this year's chapel theme, Spirit and Story, Walking It Out. The thoughts of the brainstorming group were to integrate biblical passages and stories into the various chapels over this year. When I began to think and pray about what I might say, God brought to my remembrance a story from the Bible that has had a powerful effect on me and may be an encouragement to you as well, especially at this time of the semester. The topic I would like to speak upon is overcoming obstacles. I will use as a text Mark, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12, and I invite those who have their Bibles to please come with me to that scripture. Again, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Again, Mark 2, verses 1 through 12. Using the New King's Version, it reads, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed, and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all. So they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never saw anything like this. God bless his holy word. When considering the topic of overcoming obstacles, it leads us to define what is an obstacle. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, an obstacle is something that impedes progress or achievement. I believe an obstacle is also anything that prevents us from getting to the goal or place 
where God would have you and I to be. I, what about the term to overcome or overcoming? Again, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, to overcome means to defeat either someone or something or to successfully deal with something difficult. Many of you have faced and overcome obstacles in your life. You have faced physical obstacles, or you may have faced them, such as a physical challenge, or emo emotional obstacles, such as depression or another challenge. Some may have faced social challenges, such as broken families or other broken relationships. Many have experienced spiritual obstacles when you have just not felt God or that you were close to him. Indeed, we all face obstacles. The issue becomes how do we handle these obstacles and what can they help us to understand about ourselves and Jesus? This leads us to our biblical text. Where is Jesus in this story? He is in Capernaum. In the first century, Capernaum was a fishing village with a population that many scholars estimate that was no more than 1,500 people who lived in modest homes, walked along unpaved roads, and it had a rudimentary harbor. This passage, in my view, highlights four important truths about overcoming obstacles. One, overcoming obstacles requires commitment. Two, Overcoming obstacles often necessitates creativity. Three, overcoming obstacles will allow us to see the character of God. And four, overcoming obstacles reveals the convincing power of God. So let's take each one. Number one, commitment. Overcoming obstacles requires commitment from those seeking to reach their God-inspired goals. In the text and from chapter 1 in Mark, as well as from the other parts of the other Gospels, we see that Jesus' popularity grew as he continued his ministry. He was teaching and preaching the Word of God with authority, as well as performing miracles, including healing people and casting out demons. People began to come from every direction to see and hear him, as well as to be healed by him. In this story from Mark, the second chapter, so many people have come to see and hear Jesus, and for some, I would think even possibly receive a miracle from him, that the house where he is preaching and teaching is crowded beyond capacity, so much so that even people are standing outside. Jesus coming is a huge event. We even see in the text in verse 6 that various religious leaders are present in the house where Jesus is preaching. In this context enter four men who are carrying a paralyzed man. The identity of the four men who are carrying the paralyzed man and the paralyzed man are not provided in the text nor is the relationship of the four men to the paralyzed man identified. We do not know if they are his relatives, friends, or even strangers who may have saw him by the wayside and who took pity on him. Yet, no matter who they were or were to the paralyzed man, they were determined to get this man to, D to Jesus. They saw the crowd and knew that they could not enter the house through the door, as even the doorway was full of people. However, the men were not deterred by the crowd, which was an obstacle to them in getting the paralyzed man to Jesus. They did not turn back or say, there are too many people, we cannot get to Jesus, or say, we are too late, or not this time, but maybe next time when Jesus is in town, we can get this paralyzed man to him. They knew that the paralyzed man needed a miracle from Jesus and were committed to getting the paralyzed man to Jesus. Why? Because they and the paralyzed man believed or had the faith to know that Jesus could do something for them or for him. Maybe they had seen Jesus heal others or cast out demons or teach with authority. They trusted that Jesus could heal the paralyzed man. In our own lives, when we face challenges, 
we also have to not be deterred by what stands in front of us as an obstacle. We must be determined to get to the place or the goal where we know that God is leading us. Often we miss out on blessings because we give up too soon due to what we see as an obstacle. In this story, it was a crowd, but it can be anything including circumstances, people, our past, or our background that blocks us from getting what God has for us. We have to overcome the obstacles that are preventing or hampering us from, from achieving our God-inspired goals. The question is how? This leads us to my second point, creativity. Overcoming obstacles often necessitates creativity as a result of our desperation to achieve our God-inspired goals. In addition to commitment, the text shows us that the paralyzed man and the four men that carried him and then lowered him to Jesus were creative in overcoming the obstacle of the crowd. They knew they were carrying the paralyzed man and that they could not penetrate the crowd. Maybe one or two might be able to push his way through, but not all four carrying a paralyzed man on a bed or mat. They decided they needed to come up with a creative solution. What did they do? They made an opening in the roof of the house where Jesus was speaking and lowered the man down to Jesus. They decided that if they could not get to Jesus through the use of the doorway, then they would come through the roof. Why? They were desperate to get this man to Jesus because the man needed Jesus. He needed him so much that they climbed to the roof of the house where Jesus was speaking and literally cut or dug a hole in the roof. Can you imagine Jesus speaking in the crowd, in the crowded house, and then suddenly everyone hearing a scraping sound coming from the ceiling above and bits of the ceiling falling, and then seeing four men lower this paralyzed man down on his bed or mat? These men were determined to get the paralyzed man to Jesus. In our own lives, when we are desperate to achieve our goals, especially because we know that they are God-inspired, will we be creative? It may mean changing our study patterns or giving up some old habits that are no longer working or even asking someone who we do not have a relationship with to help us. My challenge to you is the question, how is God asking you to be, uh, to be creative to overcome an obstacle in your life, to get a blessing that he has for you? Maybe doing the conventional thing or thing that you have done in the past will not work. So you may need to find your own roof to climb and cut through to get where you need to be. Third, character of God. Overcoming obstacles reveals the character of God. We see the character of God as he rewards the efforts of the men in the story to get to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In this story, Jesus sees not only the faith of the paralyzed man, but of those who carried him and then lowered him through the roof. In verse 5, it states that when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. In verse 11, he states, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. The man was healed from his paralysis. He and the four that carried and then lowered him accomplished their goal, which was to get the man to Jesus so he could be healed. In our own lives, when we are striving to overcome obstacles, we have to remember that God sees our struggles and cares about them. He will not leave us or forsake us, therefore he is right there to comfort us. He rewards our faith and sacrifices. One thing that I've learned from my own experiences is that, is that God will provide us with friends, family, even acquaintances along the way to encourage us and to help us remove the roofs that need to be removed to get to our God-inspired goals. It is in God's character to provide us with all that we need and that includes other people to help us to get to Jesus or what he has for us. Four, 
convincing power. Overcoming obstacles reveals the convincing power of God for all those who experience or see his power. We see that the overcoming of our obstacles may allow others to see the convincing power of God. Everyone, including the scribes who were even sitting in the house watching these happenings, was amazed and praised God. In verse 12, it states, this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. In our own lives, we have to understand that the obstacles that we face are there to build our faith. But we must also understand that our overcoming them may often help others who see our commitment or faith, creativity, and witness the character of God. In this biblical story, not only was the paralyzed man healed, but everyone was amazed at the power of God to not only heal, but also to forgive sin. When we come or overcome our obstacles and people know that we are serving a living and wonderful God, it should be an encouragement to them. We are called to share our testimony, not so that we get any of the glory, but that all of the glory points towards the convincing power of Christ. In conclusion, we all need to overcome obstacles. Your particular obstacles may not be my particular obstacles, but we all have obstacles to overcome. I faced many obstacles in a time of my life when I was most of your ages and was attending Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., where I also graduated from, praise God. My testimony from being a student like you is that you can make it and overcome any obstacles that get in your way. My obstacles included coming from a small southern town in the south and an under-resourced high school and from parents who never attended college. I had to study hard, ask for help, and seek God in every way, but I can say that God is faithful. He will honor your commitment. He will provide you with the courage to be creative when necessary to achieve your God-inspired goals. He will show forth his character as a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. His convincing power will be evident for others to see as you overcome your obstacles, so many might say that they have never seen anything like this. Let's pray. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.